Ooh, NEM3, NEM3, NEM3. That's all I've been hearing about the last couple weeks in particular. People texting, calling, emailing me like, oh my gosh, how are we going to make money? How's this? We're not getting anything for exporting to the grid anymore. PG&E screwing everybody. It's like, dude, you guys are missing the big picture here, okay? And matter of fact, there are some people that are missing it so badly. Salespeople are leaving California because of the like little to nothing export rates, right? And the fact that the ROI is now out to, I don't know, eight or 10 years or whatever, right? What are you, chicken? Leaving the state? You guys are the ones that created this mess, right? By convincing everybody that if there wasn't a five to six year return on investment in solar, then solar has no value. And now you're cutting out? That tells me you don't know how to sell solar. I'm not a salesperson and you guys that know me know this to be true. I hate sales conversations. I hate the dollar per watt metric. I think it's stupid, but that's where we are. But you know what? The people who stick it out here in California are the ones that are going to make out. Yeah, so you got people that are leaving California, salespeople leaving California to go to I don't know, Utah, Colorado, Texas, right? So they're leaving a state where residential rates are around 53 cents on the high side, and they're going to go to a state where it's 14 cents a kilowatt hour. Are you daft? That makes no freaking sense to me. There is still a lot of money to be made here. Yeah, in this industry, if that's if the dollar per watt is what you care about, there is. But you have to shift your thinking. It's no longer, hey, how much is PG&E going to give me for the solar that I inject into the grid? It's not about that anymore. It's about, hey, how small of a utility bill can the homeowner get? That's the shift. Yeah, forget Forget the export rates. Forget them. You're not going to get anything. Well, there is one place. Uh, we'll just bring it up now. You've seen this on Cal's website, PG&E, SDG&E, SoCal Edison, all these guys, right? And what's getting the salespeople here in California, like all hot and bothered, is this two-hour period in September right here where you can get $2.54 a kilowatt hour and then $2.86.9 a kilowatt hour. Like that's ridiculous. Eh? And the first pushback people have is like, wait a minute, six and seven, how much so are you exporting at six and seven o'clock at night? I'll tell you how much, <laughs> zero, like almost nothing. I went back and checked my five kilowatt system and at 6 p.m. last September, I was making 215 watts, okay? Now, that's a small system, right? But the point is, you're not getting anything. So the people are like, so then, of, oh, here they are. They're going to screw us over. They're going to give this nice, attractive green space here, but we can't inject solar. Well, pump the brakes, amigo, because NEM3 CPUC is now allowing us, and I checked with CALSA and verified with Bernadette Del Charo, Doing great work out there, you guys. Keep it up. We are now allowed to export battery stored energy into the grid if the battery was charged with green electrons. Okay? Yeah. You don't need a VPP anymore. You don't need special utility interconnection agreements to be able to put your battery power into the grid because before you weren't allowed to do that. But now you are. And so... What we can do is charge that battery up during the day with solar, and then 6, 7 o'clock, boom, you put it all in there. Right? And so now the trick and the companies that are going to do well are the ones who can take, let's say, Tygo's 10 kilowatt hour battery is a two hour battery. Right? So we'll put 5,000 watts into that home until that 10 kilowatt hour battery, 9.9, is, is discharged. And let me tell you something. That ain't no money to shake a stick at. Yeah? Just that alone with one, till, one 10 kilowatt hour battery discharging at five kilowatts. Yeah? You're going to make 800 bucks in September only. The rest of the time you ain't getting jacked. But in September, 
Man, you're cranking it out. You're, that's an extra 800 bucks. Yeah. And so people are like, okay, well, that brings, that's good news, right? That's good. So now that brings the ROI in a little bit more. And now people are thinking, well, you know what? If we can start chipping away at the overall costs of solar, then maybe we can bring that ROI in a little bit more, right? So permitting is about 40%, all the paperwork crap, right? Um, balance of systems, 10%-ish, right? 10% for labor. The inverter is like 10%. The modules are 20%. Very small stuff, right? Now, as soon as you add a battery, you just add 10 grand, yeah? Roughly, okay? I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV. This is just average numbers. Maybe they're off by a few percent, but that's, that's about how it is, yeah? And so now people think, well, uh, we really can't shave off too many balance of system components to really make you know, a difference. And so now they're saying, well, you know what? A 200 amp ATS costs about $1,000 to install. And that's about $2,500, whatever ATS mechanism you're using. Why don't we get rid of that? Boom, out. So now we brought the price, the initial price down. ROI's brought in a little bit. And that sounds great. But when you get rid of the ATS, what else are you getting rid of? Backup. Backup power. And I got a problem with that. Well, I do a little bit. All right? Frankly, I would never buy. If, if you came to my house and tell me I could get a five to six year ROI, but didn't have backup power, I would slam the door in your freaking face. Okay? Mainly, and, and not because my grid goes down a lot, right? Because right behind me, right over here, I've got a freezer full of game. I got a freezer full of barbecue. I got a freezer full of things that will be barbecue. So even if I only get a half hour outage, which could be more, could be less, you never know, it's worth it to me to have a storage system. Now, this may resonate with people in other parts of California that just don't care about that. They're like, ah, eh, whatever, man. It goes out like a half hour, maybe an hour, once every four or five years. Eh, whatever. All right, we'll... Uh, We'll just cook outside. We'll light candles and flashlights. Big deal. Okay, then this will resonate with them. But then it won't resonate with others like me or people who, I don't know, like in Northern California when PG&E is burning half the state down again and then willy-nilly shutting the power off when the winds get above 35 miles an hour. Like there were people four years ago when all the fires were going just rampant. They were without power for 10 days. Okay, so you better believe those people care about something else. Like they don't give a shit about ROI. They don't. It's a different ball game for them. But there's another group of people where this will resonate. And my only concern, my only issue with this is customer expectation management. Because for the first time ever in the history of forever, we're promoting batteries that do not keep the lights on when the grid goes down. And as long as the customers know that, fine. But I'm scared to death that there's going to be some people that are just pushing the only thing that matters to them, right, this five, six-year ROI, and that something else is going to suffer on the back end. You know, maybe not. I don't know. I'm just a little pessimistic when it comes to stuff like this. But the real, the real holy grail is coming, right? So what we really want is a battery system that taps into the utilities API on the back end with all those rate structures. There's different rates for weekdays, different rates for weekends, summertime, wintertime. And then you have the time of use windows where you have a low peak, a mid peak, a high peak. What we need is a battery system that taps into the utility and sets all that stuff up, all of it automatically, so that as soon as that peak time comes, boom, it changes the behavior. It commands the behavior of the battery. That's the holy grail, right? Until then, you're kind of, I don't know, manually doing everything, and maybe people will do that if they're you know, going to make 800 bucks a month uh, with their uh, battery. Yeah, they'll do that for a little while. But I would rather have something that's totally automated, right? And that's what we're gonna see. This M3 has completely changed the landscape. All that stuff they do for commercial is now going to bleed in for residential. 
And don't be scared. Man, don't leave the state. It's just now getting fun. This is when we're really going to rock it, man. Like, don't let the utilities get you down. We can still do this. We can still do this. Got to fight together. Got to stick together. And we'll get there. See ya.